Okay, so first thing uh, we were saying, like uh, we were discussing about gender, okay? Gender. Uh, we mentioned that uh, in Arabic language, we have two genders, right? Masculine and feminine. Uh, I'm just quickly, you know, just warm up, quickly go over them. So we have masculine and we have feminine, right? Uh, the Arabic terms, I'll give it to you here. Mu'annath, uh, mu'annath. Let me write it a little bit better. And mu'dhat. Gar is masculine, okay? No. So, uh, yes, yeah, so Muzakar Mu'annas, we talked about this, right? Uh, and the main thing that we need to understand about Mu'annas, Muzakar, we mentioned that it is the default, right? So, uh, right, default. So here, the main thing we said that we have to, you know, the main thing is that this Tamarbuta, right? Tamarbuta which comes at the end of a noun, okay? So when we see a tamarbut at the end of the noun, it is a very clear indication that this word is, uh, you know, like 99 personal chance that this word would be a, ma a feminine, mu'annath, right? So, uh, so and we said it, it regardless whether, you know, it, we're not uh, talking about the content, we're talking about the word, and if something is feminine and you know, for example, person, like female person, uh, then it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter about tamar but or not. It is female person is female is feminine. Okay, so we said ukht. For example, ukht. Ukhtun is what? Sister. Okay, then bintun. Bintun is what? Bintun is girl or it can be a daughter. Now you can see them, these words doesn't have tamarbuta, right? But then again, we still consider as feminine. Whereas for example, any an example of, um, example of um, tamarbuta would be, for example, siyara. Siyara tun, which is a car. What is car got? anything to do with uh, masculine and feminine, nothing, right? Other than the fact, what? It has tamar buta. That's the only thing making it uh, feminine. And we said that that's important because uh, you will see, inshallah, today we'll be talking about the uh, sentence, how it's important uh, about understanding the word, whether it is uh, masculine or feminine or not, okay? Uh, now. And we also mentioned, the book will also mention is about uh, something, you know, weird rule, which is uh, body part, body parts in pair. Okay. For example, legs, okay, legs, arms, rigilun, okay, yadun, yadun, rigilun. These are all considered uh, feminine. Because why? Because we have two legs and two arms. Make sense? So for uh, the, these are the main three um, things we know about Mu'annath so far. Yes? Uh, so now, so the main thing that we have to focus is on here in this part about the Tamar Buddha, because you'll see this is why we need to, uh, uh, this is important to understand this Tamar Buddha and we will learn today, we can even uh, make uh, a masculine noun into feminine noun. And when I say noun here, I don't uh, necessarily mean noun as a noun, I mean uh, noun as a grammatical perspective, for example, which includes what adjective. So uh, this is something that uh, we'll start talking. Any, any question about uh, this much? Because uh, I know this is a review. Last week we mentioned uh, these rules. Uh, any questions? You understand that, right? So if we understand this, then we have to, because I th uh, the book actually talks about adjective, but it doesn't talk about adjective phrase. So uh, we, we already learned a lot of adjectives in, in um, previous chapter, right? Remember, uh, we, uh, we learned about how to say uh, tall, tall wheel. Uh, I'm pretty sure we had this kind of cold and uh, hot, hard, buried, right? Jayit. 
so we'll see something that uh, uh, what we have to do in Arabic language is that sometimes in order to describe a masculine object or person, we have to use masculine adjective. And when we describe a feminine object, we have to use feminine uh, uh, adjective. And how does that work? You know, so uh, I'm quickly going to go through this. Uh, so adjectives uh, in Arabic language, right? For example, uh, bint, bint is not an adjective. Is it an adjective? Uh, let me use what what is a noun. It's not an adjective, right? So, for example, I don't know if this word is keep on popping my head. Have we done this word? So we did we see this word in this book? No. Okay. okay maybe we can use the other one. Sogir. I'm pretty sure we had this one, right? Sogirun. Yes. 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 Sogir. What is Sogir means? Sogir is small. Okay. It is opposite of what? Kabir. Kabir is big. You guys are keeping up with uh, vocabularies, especially this book. Um, uh, vocabularies are really organized and you know, it gives you all the list at the end of the chapters. And I also give you a lot of, uh, I also give you what uh, vocabulary whole book. Yeah, so sorry is uh, small and kebi is big. So these two words are what? Adjectives, obviously, right? Adjective. And this is noun. Now, why, obviously, but why am I making distinction? You will see it's very important to understand this distinction because uh, ad we have to do certain things with adjective when we make a sentence. How so? How would you say, let's see if someone can translate this one for me. The boy is small. Someone, take your time. Oh, don't take too much time. Translate this one for me. The boy is small. You have all the words you need here. How do you say the boy? Alwala, alwala do, sagirun. Yes, alwala do, sagirun. Excellent. So we have alwala do. Very good. You remove the tanwin. So we say alwala. I cannot say dun anymore because I had the word dun here. That's not gonna work. So alwala do, then sagirun. Sagirun. Okay, so we're saying the boy, okay, is small. We, I'm pretty sure we have seen this kind of sentence in the previous lesson. Now we want to learn how do we say this kind of sentence, simple sentence, in, because these are what adjective uh, sentence, like, you know, a sentence that describes a noun. Okay, you have adjective phrase and you have adjective sentence. Okay. So these are describing a noun. So how would you say, for example, the, instead of saying the boy, I want to say the girl is small. How do we say that? Instead of saying uh, the boy is small, which is al-waladu sahirun, how do we say the girl is small? So obviously we need to know our vocabularies. The, uh, sorry, the girl, my English and Arabic gets mixed up sometimes with the time. <laughs> So we, we know what, how to say it. Girl, <laughs> girl is uh, bint, gain. yes. So we say al bintu, we say al bintu, al bintu. Okay, al bintu, what? And how do you say small? We say sogir, right? Al bintu sogir. But let's see what happens. Let's see if this one works or not. Now, if we are just coming from English language and we, whatever we understand, this sentence looks perfect. You know, the girl is albint and sagir. We just used this word right here. We just had this word, sagir, small. And I have exactly the same word, small here, small here. So it should be fine and we should be happy, right? Albinto sagir. But that's where the problem is, right? That's what we have to understand. This is where Arabic language is a little bit different. 
and as far as I know, uh, different other languages also like French or something, they have this kind of issue because now what's happening is the word girl is feminine and we're using a masculine this adjective to describe a feminine noun. That's what the problem is. So in grammar, this is not correct. You cannot describe a feminine noun using a masculine uh, adjective. So that's it. We can never ever say the girl is small. We cannot make this kind of sentence in Arabic language. No, it is pretty simple actually. The correct to make this one work is extremely simple. And it goes back here, which is what we talked about is this Tamarbuta, right? Okay, so this Tamarbuta is pretty powerful and very useful. Okay, so it it does few things. If it has Tamarbuta in, in a noun, so we understand that this is a, what? Feminine, but we can use the same concept to make an adjective into a, a feminine uh, uh, word. Okay, so how so? All I have to do is add a tamarbuta here in this part. Okay, so let's see how that works. So now I can say al bintu so vi ra tun. So vi ra tun. What have I done? Nothing, I just added this stuff. So a few things, of course, let's say if, uh, the word we had, let's just see what, what we had. We had sagiratun, then we added tamarbuta and we know it at the end we need tanwin, okay? By the way, tanwin never comes in the middle. So tanwin, this, uh, this word is always, always has to be at the end. So as soon as we added the tamarbuta, now we see a tanwin here, okay? So that's not good, we have to remove the tanwin. How do we remove the tanwin? We remove the tanwin and we just put a fatha. That's a simple rule. It will always, always work. 100% rule. What is the rule? When you add a tamar buta, you remove the previous haraka and just put a fatha. Regardless what it was, whether it was a dhamma or fatha or kasra, you just remove it and put fatha. Okay, so it will always be, it will always, always fatha before what? Uh, sorry, Tamabuta. Ta. So this is here, you another golden rule, if you're interested. So it wasn't that bad, right? It wasn't that bad. So let's do a few uh, example. So how do we say, let's say, um, uh, let's say, let's say what? Kabirun, Kabirun, Kabirun is what? Big. <clears throat> and how do we make this one into a feminine word? Feminine adjective? This is masculine adjective. Hmm? Any idea? Anyone want to try writing it? Kabirun. Kabira tun. Yes, 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 yes. Kabira tun. Kabira tun. That's why, and we have Jamil, you know, that's why we have uh, Jamilun, and we see a lot of uh, women has their name, Jamila tun. Yes, yes, yes. See? Jami Latun. Okay, so that's pretty simple. So this is another uh, cool thing in Arabic language. I kind of like this Tamar Buddha thing because, you know, even though it's not 100%, but it is very nice way for us to identify, number one, that the word is feminine, number one. For example, if you just look at here, you know, we, we understand this is, uh, we just look at difference between these two, we know this uh, this one is feminine. At least this much we know because we see the Tamar Buddha. At least we can start imagining uh, like that. So we understand the word is feminine. And then it looks like very quite simple to change from a masculine word to feminine word, right? So that's pretty cool. Uh, so, you know, the question might be in your head. So can you do this with 
your noun because this Kabir, Jamil, the big, beautiful, small, these are all what? Adjective words. So does it work with nouns? The answer is not that simple. It's yes and no kind of uh, situation. How, how so? For example, uh, we, we just had the word walad. Can, waladun, can you just add tamarbuta and make it into female girl, a female boy? No, it's not gonna work. Okay, that's not gonna work. And then for example, uh, uh, rajul is what? A rajul is, uh, is man. Can you just add tamarbuta and make it woman? Yes, no, it's not gonna work. So in noun, majority of the time it's not going to work. In noun, in adjective, it has to work, okay? Uh, in my mind right now, I cannot uh, think of any examples for, or word, executive word that, unless the word doesn't change, some word doesn't change. Those are different things. We're not talking about that. It's not, those word doesn't only have a problem with Amar Buta, you cannot even put harakat in there. So that's a different issue. But uh, I cannot think of any uh, adjective uh, that can be changed, but we cannot put Amar Buta. Right now, it's not coming in my head. But for nouns, we know, I can tell you this much, that most of the time it's not going to work. And I give you a few examples that when you do what happened here, it, you cannot do it. It's not going to make any sense if you do it. It just the word doesn't exist. But sometimes if you do it, the word exists. Uh, and this is my favorite example. I always put this one. Uh, maktab. Okay, so we have maktabun, which is what? Desk. We learned this one. And then we, if you add the tamar buta, you're like, okay, let's see what, what happens. Well, you you actually make a new word here. Maktabatun which means library, okay? So it, it, it actually, you know, word meaning changes, okay? A lot of time it happens. So Tamar Buta actually has a lot of different rules. It, it, it's a very powerful um, and interesting uh, letter because it, we sometimes use Tamar Buta to make it uh, distinguish between the, you know, uh, plural and singular, some word, Okay, so I don't want to give you an example, but I'm just letting you know this time has a lot of implications, a lot of applications, right? So uh, uh, one of them is the most obvious one is that what? It identifies if something is masculine or feminine. Second one is that you we can use that to interchange an adjective from masculine to feminine. And third one, you know, as you can see, it's kind of weird. Like sometimes you add Tamar Buddha and it, the meaning kind of changes. So these are all examples where it doesn't work. You cannot, you cannot just simply use Tamar Buddha to in any noun you wish, okay? So, but does it work sometimes? Yes, I'll give you some example where it does work, where you add Tamar Buddha in a noun and it works. For example, Walidun, Walidun is father. Walidun is father. This word is in Quran, and I don't know if this word's in your book or not, but uh, I'll give you some of the words that's in the book, but uh, let's let's see what happens here. So Walidun, by the way, these two words look similar, so don't get confused. This is Walad. Walad is a boy. And Walid, okay, Walid. Walidun is father. Hmm. Let's experiment. What happens when you add Tamar Buta? What is the expectation first? For example, here, you didn't have any expectation. Sometimes like you want to do something, you have to know if it makes sense. You know, you have a maktab desk and you know, you're sitting here with your studio, you know, with the laboratory, you're playing around with experimenting something with buns and burners and everything. And you want to add them or both to desk. But what is your expectation? What do you want the desk to become a female desk? So here, even this experimentation doesn't make any sense. Like it's not clear what you're trying to do. Okay, so that means, you know, it, you know, that's why it's better that it is, it comes a new word, but here it kind of makes sense, you know, you have a man and you want to say woman. So you're experimenting, does it work? And I just give you this thing doesn't work. So here you're kind of doing the same experiment. Okay, so I have the word father, walidun. let me do some experiment, put some chemistry on it and put tamar buta. let's see what happens. What is your expectation? You want what? I want you guys to write something. What do you want? this uh, Tamar Buddha to happen. The word is father. What is your expectation? What are you, why are you trying to add Tamar Buddha? 
what kind of meaning do you want from it? Any answer? Hmm. Mother, of course. Guys, you guys not thinking. Mother. So you, first of all, you know, before doing experiment, you need to know what you're trying to do. You have the word father and you want, it's, it's obviously it's feminine version should be mother. Yes. So now does it work? Yes, this one works. This one works. This one works. Okay, so you have a father, Walidun, you are Tamar Buddha, you have Walidatun, which is mother. I'll give you another example. I don't know, these ones, I don't know if it's in the book. Jaddun, uh, Jaddun is grandfather. Okay, you want to add Tamar Buddha, and you're, you know, you're lazy, you don't want to learn any new word. You just wish it works. Well, Alhamdulillah, you know, you you got it. Jadda Tun, which is grandmother. But as I said, don't get too comfortable. It doesn't work all the time. The one that works, you kind of have to know which one works. Okay. So this word is same thing as Ab. And this is same thing as Um. So shut down. Okay. Abun umun. There, the same meaning. There's a little bit difference. When you say walidun and walidatun, these are your biological parents. It cannot be anything else. When you say ab and um, it could be you know stepfather, stepmother, or sometimes they can use as for uncles and whatnot, uh, anything. But you know, ab and um is father also. This is this is the one used most often. Jayid. Uh, so you understand? So uh, what I'm trying to show you that sometimes it works. And here's one set of nouns that works most of the time. One set of nouns, which is like professions. Okay. So for example, Mudaris, Mudarisun, what is Mudaris? Is a teacher. Mudaris is your teacher. It would be really bad if we had to learn another word just to refer to a female teacher. It's a teacher, I just wanna to refer to a female teacher. In Arabic language, if you know anything about Arabic language, you know that there's no way we're gonna be having the same word for male teacher and female teacher. Okay, because the, you know, in the language always distinguishes, especially when it comes to human being, uh, anything, right? So how does it, what is a female teacher? Mudarisatun. Same thing, teacher, and you just put, you understand that is a female teacher. So, so what is the difference? Different is this Tamar, nothing. And the same rule that I explained to you. When you add Tamar Buddha, what happens the, uh, what, what is the letter before it gets? Fatha, always, that's the always case. So don't worry, how do you know the rule? Rule is simple, doesn't matter what's in here. We had a Tanwin here, now it gets what? It gets, uh, it gets a fatha. Okay, so for example, another word, I'm pretty sure this word is uh, in the book. This word, of course, also in, was in the book. For B boon. What is for Guys, 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 guys. What is for Doctor, yes. So now you want to go to a female doctor. If in the if you go to hospital and say you know I need a tobib, you know, you know they might just give it to a male doctor. So you don't want that, right? So uh, especially with the sister. So you want to say I need a tobiba. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. Sorry, make sense. You guys are getting it. You guys are getting it. So that's the whole story. That's all we need to know about this concept of gender for now. Okay, so what what we know, the same thing. This Tamar Buddha business is very important, right? And we just understand because this book we're learning about adjective sentence. Okay, in adjective sentence, so basically um, you have to. So what? Okay, let me uh, let me clarify this one a little bit. Uh, so maybe. 
al baitu al baitu i want to say the house is far baidun al baitu baidun okay the house is far al maktaba al makta batu what how what would we say here now the al maktaba is a library i want to say the library is far what word the far is right here by what what would i say here by even this one we have to change it's very simple initially it looks like complicated but it's not complicated because alhamdulillah it's very easy for us to make the adjective into feminine that much interesting but if you understand the concept which i'm going to give it to you right now then you know why i have to change it change is why because agreements agreement sentence uh nominative sentence you know i'll just write a few you know i'll explain later the agreement is that uh you know the noun and adjective uh, gender has to ma match even between subject plus predicate okay so what am i saying here is this is your subject right subject and this is your predicate yes yes guys subject and predicate when you have a simple subject and you know it's not only simple so it doesn't matter how big sentence it gets but as long as in a sentence which is nominative sentence nominative sentence in a nominative sentence, right? Most of these things we're getting in this book will be getting nominative sentence anyway. We have something called subject and predicate. Yes, this much we understand. So what is the agreement? Agreement is that the gender has to match. Okay, the predicate has to match the gender of the subject. There's two agreements in subject in nominative sentence, only two. This is number one. And number two, something that we'll be dealing with later, which is, I'll just write it here, uh, number. Number has to match. Which means basically if the subject is plural, your predicate has to be plural. So that's something that we'll deal with later. We haven't done plural yet. But for us right now, this is the rule that we're more interested in, okay? So when we have a simple sentence, subject and predicate is very simple you know you have a subject your predicate needs to match just right now think about your adjective has to match with you subject in what in gender okay so this is like you start have to think about like uh, if you just get this arabic mindset you like it's very common sense because an arabic person in arabic mentality they will never use you know because they have this masculine feminine concept so they will never use a masculine word to describe a feminine word Okay, so you just have to kind of get into this idea. Then you will see all of these are very, very uh, uh, common sense. And we're very happy because we can easily make an adjective into feminine uh, adjective just by adding tamaruta. So that's, that's good news. Okay, makes sense? Is this part clear? Yes, guys? Yes, alhamdulillah. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see if we can go to the book. Jade, okay uh yes this one the last okay so last time of course we finished chapter five so we're starting with what adarsul sadis adarsul sadis is the sixth um sixth lesson okay so this is the sixth lesson and it looks like it's going to be about hadihi what is hadihi hadihi is this it's just the female version the masculine is hadha okay this is masculine so let's f uh, read this text okay and see uh, if we can get something out of it a lot of things happening you want a review you know you got review right here because all the things that we learn is here so how that we this is from chapter one so you know what how that means how is this for masculine 
I'm just going to go detail in maybe one and one or two and the other ones I'll go quickly. So Hadha is masculine. And we also know this is definite, right? Hadha is a definite word. And now we have Ibn. The word is Ibnun. Ibnun. Ibnun is what? Son. It can also be boy, but son, right? So it should have been like, I'm just, you know, trying to review some of the things that we learned. It should have been Ibnun. Because I know this word, we know this word, we learn this word. If you don't know it, then, you know, well, you cannot, you know, think about what I'm saying right now. But if you know the word is Ibnun, and there's no Alif Lam, so it should be Ibnun. Why is Ibnu? Why do we have only one Dhamma? Because now you have to th start thinking about maybe this is part of that off. Maybe this is part of Idafa. And how do you check? You check if the next word has, exactly, if the next word, is uh, is genitive case or not? Has a cast or not? Yes, it does. Ibn Hamidin. And also, there's many ways to look at. Number one, this is like you know, you know, it's indefinite. This word can never be definite, or have alif lam. And this word most usually is definite. So you kind of see that pattern. So again, from the bird's eye view, in the beginning, I always want you guys to make this kind of uh, you know eyes sharpen for these kind of things. Uh, you know, even though it's like, it sounds like it might be silly, but it's really useful. Okay, so now you are from the far away, you're looking at Ibn Hamidin, first one, indefinite, indefinite. Okay, so this is an Ilafa. Okay, and I'll just review all the words here. The first one is called Mudaf. Okay, Mudaf. Second one is Mudaf Ilay. Okay, Mudaf, Mudaf Ilay. Okay, so quickly remember the rules. What we know about the first one, it is what it cannot take alif lam. Basically, it's going to be in the form of indefinite, and it cannot take tanwi. And the second the rule for the second one is what it will always be in the state of uh, um, uh, jar like majrur, so with the kasra. Okay, and second one can be definite, which is like nine most of the time. And sometimes can be indefinite, that's not uh, our discussion. So second one, right now you can think of as a definite word. So Ibn Hamidin, how would you translate now? Ibn Hamidin, you say, we need the son of Hamid. So what are you saying? You're saying, this is the son of Hamid. Okay, and it is a sentence. Now you're saying wa, wa is of course end. Uh, now we start seeing that what is hadi? Hadi is that this in the feminine form. So obviously you cannot say hada bintu yasir. Why? Because bint is feminine. And again, the same concept we have this idafa, right? Bintu, because the word is bintun, but it's saying bintu yasirin. Okay, now at this point, you really need to understand that this is an idafa. So you will say, what? Uh, the daughter of Yasir. And this is the daughter of Yasir. Yes, guys? So that, uh, that's uh, what this sentence is saying. Okay, let's see the next one. Next one's Ibn Hamid again. So we right now we understand this is the you know this Idawa phrase, uh, the son of Hamid. You know it's Hamid's son, right? Of course we can say Hamid's son, but I told you in usually in the Arabic in the beginning, especially in the beginning, just translate as off. You will see your life will be easier. Okay, uh, it's same thing. Both of them are same, but uh, just stick with the top one for now. So what? So this is what? What about uh, uh, son of Hamid? By the way, maybe this point I should also review this concept. Concept is what? This uh, sorry, the subject. So this is the subject, right? We're gonna say because somebody says the son of Hamid, so that's the subject. You need to know what about son of Hamid, right? It's not complete. You need to say something. So that's the subject, and you need to give something information about the subject, which is the predicate. Predicate is just completes uh, the meaning. So what about uh, son of Hamid? Jalisun. What is Jalisun? Sunday. When you go book to, they will teach you Jalasa. 
Jalasa. Ah, look, it's the same word. Jalasa and Jalasa. That means it's in the past tense. He, he, sorry, why am I writing standing, sitting? He is, he's, uh, he sat. Yeah, he sat. So he's in the uh, past. So now you see, if you memorize this word, when you go to book two, you don't have to memorize this word. It's, you, you will recognize Jalison was sitting. Okay, Jalasa, it's coming from the same thing. Same thing here. Wa kefun is standing. Okay. And the word, you, when you go to book uh, two, you'll find the words wakafa. Wakafa. See, wa kefun wakafa, which is stood in the past tense. And now in the book two, you have no problem. You already know these words. Okay, so these words are very, very important and powerful. Okay, so Hamid is, uh, is sitting. Okay, now here's interesting. So now we're describing Wabint. Wabint. Okay, so what are you going to do here, guys? There is no harakat, so we're lost. Wa bintu. We have this word looks like indefinite right and we have another word next after that is definite so how would you translate this one wa bint let's we say wa bint bint i know his daughter yes here is a name yes so it will be idafa bintu yasir bintu yasirin okay you will translate as uh, the uh, daughter of uh, Yasir, daughter of Yasir, and daughter of Yasir doing what? And this is also your subject is doing what? Wa. Okay, look what's happening. The word that we learned last time was waqif. Waqifun, right? This is from previous chapter. Waqifun was standing. But because we're describing the subject of this sentence is what a uh, feminine. We cannot describe that person or that even object using the masculine walk if that we learned. We have to change that into female is wa fi fa tun. Okay, so that is the whole technique. This is the whole if you understand this much, then you will understand the whole chapter uh, um, chapter six and seven. That's the only thing, and uh, I'm telling you that this is a good thing that it's quite easy to make this change, you know, from going from waqifun to waqifatun. From jalisun, for example, if you wanted to say, no, no, bint yasir is not standing, she's sitting, what are you going to do? Huh? Uh, what are you going to do? Can someone tell me? For example, you want to say bintu yasir is sitting, not standing. And the word is jalisun. It will be Jali Satun. Very, very simple. So what it comes back to that, you know, if you understand, if you memorize the word and then especially adjective, making it a masculine feminine is super easy. Okay, so that's all it is uh, we're gonna be seeing um, in this chapter. So man hadhi, who is this? So right now, you know, when you say man hadihi, the context is that you know that person is female. Okay, so obviously, you know, because last time we said man hadha, even though you don't know anything about the person, but he, of course, you know it's a female, that's why you're using man hadihi. So you say hadihi ukhtu. Again, ukhtu, because the word is ukhtun. Ukhtu muhan, muhan, muhan des. See, muhan des, yes. Muhan des, the word, I don't know if we had this word. Mohandesun. Mohandes is engineer. Okay, Mohandes is engineer. Okay, and Uchtun, uh, uh, Uchtun is uh, Uchtun is sister. This word uh, is, is going to be in the word list. Okay, so I'm just letting you know. So Uchtun is sister. So now we have the same concept, the Idafa. You wanted the Idafa practice. These books looks like giving you lots of, this chapter is giving you lots of Idafa. So Uchtu Muhandisi. We have the Uchtu without Dhamma and we have the Kasra. So this is our standard Idafa uh, 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 construction, right? 
So what is the sister of the engineer? The sister of the engineer. Yes. So this is the sister of engineer. So next one we have, uh, I'm just gonna quickly go through them and then see uh, what else we can do. Uh, this eyes, that question, uh, here, here is she. Okay, this is, I don't know if we had this pronoun before, here is she, and which is opposite of hua. Hua is he. Here is she and hua is she. So these are your two pronouns we have so far. Uh, here, Aidan, Aidan is also, this is a good word to learn, also. Okay, so you say your friend is sitting, you know, Muhammad Jalisun, and you want to say, I'm sitting also. Ana Jalisun Aidan. But be careful, uh, because I said it now, I kind of have to, uh, this is a interesting, this is interesting actually. Uh, not just, I don't know. I said what? I, I said Ana Jale Sun. Muhammad is sitting. Muhammad's my friend. He's sitting. Or my brother, whatever. And I sitting also. Ana Jale Sun. I don. I don. The issue is not I don. Issue is here. Can you say that I'm asking, let's say, uh, uh, sister, sister Sultana? Can you say Ana Jalisun? You're saying Muhammad is your brother. He is sitting. Muhammad Jalisun. Wa Ana Jalisun Aidan. Can you say that? Who do you think? Remember, I'm trying to get you no. Yes, because I want you to think about go into the Arabs' mindset because they have this whole concept of masculine and feminine. So once you understand this, everything will be easy. Now you know why even the Anna, Anna, can, Anna has nothing to do with masculine and feminine because Anna is I, can be masculine and feminine. But even here, the context you have to change because you are a sister. So now you cannot say Anna, you cannot say Jalisun. You have to say Jalisatun. Jalisatun. So it looks like our sister has to do a little bit extra work, right? I, we can just, Anna Jalisun, you have to think about the whole thing. Wait a minute, let me add the Tamar Buta, then remove the Tanwin and put Fatai. All of this thing happening in your brain, right? So you have to say, Anna Jalisatun, right? So, and uh, I, you know, learn the word Aidan is, is a nice word <clears throat> also. So she's saying, uh, uh, here, Aidan, Mohandis, Aidan, just like in, in English, which is also, you can move around, you can put wherever you want. Like you can say, Ahia <clears throat> Mohandisatun Aidan. You can put the Aidan here also. Just like in English, I, I can say, Is she also engineer? Or I can say, Is she in engineer also? You see, the also can go either side. In Arabic, it's the same thing. Okay? So you can bring Aidan wherever you want. So, uh, yes, yeah, so Mohandisa is the same thing. You see what's happening? We had this word, Mohandis engineer and now what's the difference we just added tamar buta to make it feminine why would we want to do this why 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 because we have here okay we're describing a uh a what we're describing a female okay guys if you understand this whole female things you will see oh, right now if you just think like randomly oh my goodness i have to think about putting time over here after thinking pull, putting time over there you know if you think randomly you will be like oh this is too much it's too complicated but if you just think about it it's very simple you're talking about female just make let me make uh this description or, or whatever i'm talking it's predicate into a female then you will see everything will kind of make sense so, she, so basically he's asking, whoever is that, is their name? No, he's asking, is she, Ahia, is she, Aidan Muhandisatun, is she also an engineer? And she's replying, remember this Hamza, you need an uh, answer with uh, Naam or La, yes or no. So she's answering with what? No, La is no. Here she is, what? Tabiba. See, we couldn't say Tabib. Hiya Tabibun. That wouldn't have worked. So you have to say, Hiya Tabiba. She's a doctor. Okay. Okay, so now we have uh, 
how do you read this one? Anybody want to read this? Because this is a little bit technical. Some, can somebody read this part for me, only this part? How would you read with the ending and everything? We did this one last week. Let me see if you guys remember or pick up. Sayaratun. Okay, so you're saying this word, word Sayaratun. Yes. And uh, and this one? What do you say this one? Mean or what? See, this context has to work right now because the harakat is gone. So it because we know two words that looks exactly like this. The word mean and also the word man. Yes, so it's man. Okay, so but the issue is you're you're right with this one, sayara. But the issue is we have a problem here because remember in the last time when you ask about whose remember if you say whose there's apostrophe s here, right? Whose car? What is this apostrophe s? This is the idafa. This is your whole idafa. It's same thing as car of who? Because if you translate this one, you are, you want to know you're not saying a car. If you say sayaratun, it means a car. Man hadi, who is this? This is what you're saying. If you, if I say sayaratun, man hadi, then I'm saying a car. Who is this? It's kind of you know. So basically, you probably understand. You want to say whose car is this? And you see when you, even in English when you say whose, you have this apostrophe s, which is same thing as idafa. Now, what do you think? How would you say this one? The first one, say so yeah. Yes, exactly. Now you get it. Now it's a sayaratu man. Very nice. So it will be whose car is this, right? Now you're answering hadihi this sayara to al mudiri. Hadihi sayara to al mudiri. This is the car of the principal. principal. Guys, um, uh, are you guys getting this? This is a little bit complicated or is okay? Because two main thing you, we have to master right now. Number one is idafa. This idafa, guys, idafa is a big deal, right? Idafa is the main thing. But I think, you know, don't worry. If you didn't get this one, if you didn't get this one, don't worry about this one. This is a little bit tr tricky. It's not that simple. If you didn't get this one, uh, you know, I'm just I'm not being tough on you on here. But this one you should understand, right? The first one is indefinite. Second one is definite. You know, we're talking about the car, the principle, maybe it's is Nidofa, right? This is something you kind of have to guess. Even though there's no harakat, you have to guess that this is probably Nidofa, like off. Okay? So now what do you do with off? You kind of have to know the rule. Rules, the, there's only two rules, guys. The first one is always what? Uh, it never takes tanwi. Okay? It's always like an indefinite. It never takes tanwi. So sayaratu. And yes. And the last one is what? It takes kasra. So these are, you know, simple two rules uh, you will have to get used to, inshallah. Yes. Complicated, tough, difficult, finish. My dream about learning Arabic is finished. That's it. I'm quitting. Uh, so we have ma hadihi. Okay, so we're saying thing, hadihi, what? Okay, so we're getting a new words now. We always use our irons to, you know, iron our shirts, our kids' shirts and whatnot. So now you say mikwatun, mikwatun. Guys, even there's a hidden verb here. These nouns, do not underestimate these nouns. If you really want to be successful in next, after the six months that I'm talking about, there's a verb like, you know, this mikwa is iron. So how would you say he is ironing something? Yakwi, same word, kapwa, everything is there. Okay. So when you do verb, you'll see that subhanallah, when you, get, you know, you don't have to memorize these words. So mikwa is iron. This is an iron. Liman, what is liman here? Remember? Li is, okay, maybe we haven't had this word. Uh, so this is interesting because there's a two words here, li and man. Li is 
preposition. Li, no, 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 Li is not that. Li is preposition. This is preposition. What does it mean? A standard meaning is for. That's why when you say Lillahi for Allah. Lillah. Oh, sorry. Lil, Lillahi. For example, you want to say this is for Muhammad. Li Muhammad. Now, if I say, let me see how, how much you guys are thinking. If I say Li is a preposition, okay, and I'm saying Muhammad, the word was Muhammadun. So, what would be the ending here? Li Muhammad, Dun, Dan, Din. That's your Dun, Dan, Din, right? This is whole Arabic language. It's Dun, Dan, Din. Is it Li Muhammadun or Muhammadan, Muhammadin? Li is a preposition. Remember the preposition, what happens after the preposition gets what? Kasra. Okay, I hope they have a lot of preposition because it looks like you guys need a little bit preposition, uh, preposition uh, rules. So, uh, after preposition is always kasra. So, li muhammadin. So, for Muhammad. And let's see if we get, but just understand there's a two words. Li man is for who? For who? You know, we have the both of them. For man is who? Just combine, you have for who? Or who or whom, right? You know, it might be whom, for whom. Li man hadhi, for whom is this? Okay, hadhi, ah. I thought it's not there, it's right here, subhanAllah. Li Khaledin. For Khaledin. Ah, why? Why, Kasra? Why, why, why? Why, why, why? Because it is preposition. After prep Kasra. After prep, kasra, put this thing in your mind. You sleep and you wake up, you're dreaming. After preposition, kasra. After preposition, kasra. And then you wake up and everybody thinks you're finished, you're gone. You're mad, right? So that's the rule. Li is our new preposition. Last time, I think we learned four of them. So this is our fifth preposition. One of very complicated and very uh, uh, expressive preposition is half li. Because this li has many, 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 many different meanings. It could mean for, it could mean have, it could mean with, it could, it has a lot of different meanings, right? But the most standard one is for. Okay, so for Hamid. So whose is this? What are they talking about? I don't know. Whose is this? This is for Hamid. Whatever it is, it is for Hamid. So Adarajatu. Okay, so this a ah is again. Remember this this hamza. You kind of have to. I'm pretty sure you're kind of getting it. The hamza is like sneaks into words. You know, it just attached to the word. So you kind of have to distinguish this hamza from the word itself. Okay, J. The raja. The raja is what? A bicycle. Bicycle. Bike. Okay. The raja is bike. The word is the raja tun. The word is. Darajatun. Hmm. Subhanallah. At this point, when you see a noun without alif lam, you should think about I need to see a tanwin. This is your initial because we have to build on the ideas. The basic rule is that a noun should always have tanwin. One of the attributes, the description of noun is that it has a tanwin. And the only time you remove the tanwin is what? When you have alif lam. If it doesn't have alif lam, I need to see tanwin because this tanwin is it's like that's the specialties of noun. That's what unique thing about noun. So here, you know, there's no alif lam. So you should have seen tanwin, the rajatun. So I don't have a tanwin. And then, so you have two explanations. One is that there's alif lam, which is not the case. Another explanation is that it is what? It is a part of idafa. Yes, uh, so yes, you tell me the ra, yes, it should be fatha. But remember, I told you a long time ago, when you have alif after any letter, putting this fatha, guys, it is very, very redundant. Sometimes I do it just, you know, some, some book will do it. This book is a little bit smarter, so that, that means they will not do this. Because after, if you have fatha here, so if, I mean alif here, and doesn't matter what letter you have. Uh, well, I need to put a word that doesn't connect. What? 
it's always going to be fatha. So that means putting a fatha here is really redundant, right? You understand? It's like no need for this. Just like, just like here. Right now they're teaching you this fatha is not needed. Why? Well, no, no, not here. This is not clear, but it, it, it's still clear. Tamar Buddha, you have this fatha, you don't, you don't need it. Because why? I just told you before. If you have Tamar Buddha, what is the, the letter before Tamar Buddha, what does it get? Always get fatha. Always. So what's the point of me putting fatha here? Tell me. Right now, I'm pretty sure they're just putting it because, you know, it's a new word. They, you know. So this is one thing. It's going to help you with reading without the harakat. Because you see Tamar Buddha before, you always pronounce fatha. And same thing with alif. If you have alif, there's no need for fatha. Because it will always be fatha anyway. The yeah and wow always, it it's works the similar way, but it's not always the case. For example, you say, uh, let's say I'm just, you know, here, if I have something like that, initially, I don't know whatever it makes or not, sense or not. Initially, you want to read boo. You want to read boo. Why? Because it's wow. Even though there's nothing, there's nothing, you're not going to say, ba, no, why? Because wow is here. What goes with wow? Dhamma goes with wow. So you want to read with Dhamma. And you have, uh, for example, here. You're not going to say phi because you see yeah. So you want to read kasra, even if there's nothing. Uh, so, for example, if I had this same word here, anything, and I didn't put anything, let's say, and I'm putting down, you know, Tanwin here, it doesn't matter. You see here, the first one, this one, you want to read as a Kasra. That's the basic rule. Because why? Because the next one you have here. So, Harakat before Ya usually gets Kasra, Harakat before Wow usually gets Dhamma. And this is not 100%, but majority of time, I would say like 80% plus, maybe 90% of the time. So, you know, this is something, uh, you know, and this is always the case. These two are always. So, for example, I just give you an example. How would you, only thing I have to tell you is this one and everything else with the rules that I gave you, you know, even if you have never seen it, this one, you've seen it before, but even if you have never seen it, you know how to pronounce because, okay, why? Because I don't know what to put here. Oh, no, no worries. I see, yeah, that means I'm going to put Kasra here. Okay, this one is done. And once I put Kasra here, that means it's Sukun anyway. Oh, I see, I don't know what to put here. I see uh, Tamar Buddha. Okay, that means it has to be Fatha. That's it, you're done. You, you put your Harakat by yourself by using simple math game. Okay? That's it. Anyways, inshallah, this thing, and this is important, especially for you guys, since you guys are studying this book, this book will uh, remove the Harakat super fast. Here, there's no Harakat. And see, he, I don't have to put it here because, you know, we understand we have a Tamar Buddha, it has to have Fatha before it. Inshallah, you will you'll get used to it, but I will give you, I'll remind you these rules uh, to help you out. So, the Raja to, uh, the Raja to Anas, okay, so now we have this Idafa form, Anasin, everything makes sense, uh, no Tanwin and the Kasra. So we're saying, bike off of Anas. So it's the question, so is this the bike of uh, Anas. Here's one thing, this kind of sentence is kind of, you know, so might be a little bit weird for you to see, to translate, because if you translate word for word, let's do this. Uh, if you, you know, it's kind of weird. I don't know why I removed the whole thing again. Bike of Anas. I'll just ask the is because of uh, this Hamza, this. So is bike of Anas this? It's kind of sound weird. Like you kind of have to like move this one here and put this one here, something like that. Uh, this one you can also say ahadhi darajatu. You can you can put this hadhi here, but better way is saying like that. But you know, for us, it's in the beginning, it's very difficult to do the translation. So first, what do you do? You have to have a trust that this book is not making mistake. Okay, that you know the book, the grammar is good. So, so if you have this kind of trust, then what do you do first? You just, uh, sorry, first you just translate word for word. Now I have the ease, I have bike of Anas and I have this. Now let's work on your English grammar, okay? Then see how to make it sense in English, okay? There you go. Okay, then he's saying, لا هذه دراجة عمار. No, this is, again, دراجة عمار, the bike of Ammar. I don't need to translate this, it's self-explanatory. The word is Jadid. 
new. At-talibu jadidun. The student is new. Why am I saying jadidatun? Because it goes back what? It goes back to bike. Hold on a second. Bike, bike is a bike. So why do I have to use feminine version? Because the bike, the word itself is feminine. Yes. Because the darraja has tamarbuta. And this hadith is referring to the raja. See, everything is connected. So once you know your noun, the subject, and then you understand is masculine and feminine, then you know what to do. You know what kind of pronoun to use. For example, you can say here, here, here. Oh, this is something I didn't even explain. Well, it's nothing to explain. If I explain, if, you know, you might think, oh my God, this is another rule. It's no rule. Because I just told you that uh, the, the raja uh, let's spend one minute here. The ra, see, I'm putting this fata here, which is no needed. The ra, I'm putting everything for you guys. The ra is what a bike, and I also told you, and we, I don't have to tell you, you guys already know it's feminine. Now, in order to use this one, if I want to use this pronoun, see, that's why first thing you have to know the noun, the subject is it a masculine or feminine? Once you establish it's feminine. Guess what? In, you, you want to say it instead of saying who are, you have to say here. See, everything starts changing. Your pronoun changed already. Instead, you want to say this instead of saying hada, which we learned, you have to say hadihi. Your demonstrative pronoun also changed. Everything starts changing. And instead of saying you want to say it's new, jadid, now your adjective also has changed completely. Well, completely, I mean, you understand, right? Jadid, the you get it? Just by knowing this one attribute of this word, which is whether it's masculine or feminine. So that's why it's important. So instead of saying hadihi, instead of saying this is new, you want to say it is new. No problem, simple, just say here and you're done. It is new. Okay, now why you're saying here? Because every time you use a pronoun or demonstrative pronoun or adjective, you have to know it has to go back to a noun first. You cannot use here, hadi, or anything without noun. The whole definition of pronoun is that it replaces a noun. So you have to know what is the noun. The noun is the raja. Once you know the noun, then you will see everything else. You can use it very easily. Okay, I have like uh, maybe less than 10 minutes or so. Uh, I want to finish this thing. Oh, subhanAllah. Let's go quickly. Uh, There's not much to talk here. Hadhi Sa'atu Ali. Same concept, Sa'atu Ali. And uh, sometimes, by the way, uh, if you have a Shadda, some book, they put the Shadda Kasra here. But if you have a Shadda, usually uh, the standard way is writing it under the Shadda. So this indicates it's Kasra. And if it was Fatha, it would have been here. Okay, so, uh, you know, just pointing out. So this is Sa'a's watch. Watch, you know, the one that you wear in your hands. Okay, Sa'atu Ali, the watch of Ali. So it's the Idafa. So this is why you saying this is because of Sa. Sa is what? Masculine word or the feminine word? It's a feminine word. And here, Jamila. See, now, same thing I just explained to you. See, I don't have to spend too much right now. Why, why am I saying here? Because once I establish this word is feminine, then I can start using any of this thing. I know exactly what to use. Jamila, I'm using Jamila. Adjective is mask feminine, the pronoun is feminine, everything is feminine. Okay, it all goes back to this once you understand this subject or, or the noun, not subject, rather the noun that you're describing. Okay, and jiddan is very. This is another word, jiddan. Okay, uh, these are uh, you guys have to know uh, like aidan and jiddan. It's a very a nice word, we, you can use it all the time. It's very like you know, uh, it's Har, remember you learn the har. Har is hot. Har jiddan. You have, you know, you have a rice, you just cooked rice. You know, we cannot eat it. You can say hada har jiddan. And one thing you can uh, probably you're noticing, this one, uh, the jiddan, it's, uh, you don't have to worry about masculine and feminine. You can use it for both masculine and feminine. Okay? Because this is not an adjective. You're describing something else. Uh, in in uh, in Arabic, uh, in English, we call it adverb, right? Adverbs. Jid. Okay, we have hadihi mil aqa, mil aqatun. See, now we have our tanwin. Finally, we see a tanwin in this chapter. So that means we're talking about indefinite here. 
Milaka is a spoon. How do you spell spoon? Maybe that's how. A spoon. Now it's not part of idafa because I saw my tanwin. So this is a spoon. Wa hadhi qidr. Qidr is uh, what? Qidr uh, is, uh, I'm going to tell you something. Qidr is what? Uh, this, uh, you know, bowl or like, a, what do you call pan or something like that? These things. This is qidr. What do you call these things? Uh, I don't know. What, what's the English word you would use? Uh, what is that word? Well, it's not coming in my mind. Pot. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pot. Okay. And this pot. So here, interesting thing. This word is considered, you might be wondering, scratching your head. And I was also scratching my head because this qidr is being described with hadhi. You're using hadhi for qidr. Now, if we think, if we, you know, few ways to look at it. Number one, what's going on? Number two is, you know, if the book is right, what, of course the book is right. So what does it indicate? Indicates to you that this is, uh, the qidr is considered as feminine word. Now, in this class, we didn't mention about those exception in the Saturday class, I did mention it because the book also mentioned some of the exception cases where the word is neither feminine, female person, the pot is not a female person, although female are the one who uses this thing often, subhanAllah. Maybe that's why those Arabs, those Arabs, you know. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, if it's not a female person, like um doesn't have tamar, but we don't have any problem. We still consider it as feminine. And qidr is not part of your body parts, like of course not, uh, in pairs. But there's also another one is exception case. Just think on right now as exception. There's nothing much to say about these things right now. Some words... Arabs consider as feminine, regardless. I'll just give you one example. My Saturday class students, they know this word. Narun, nar is what? Fire. Is this a female person? Of course not. Is this your body parts? I hope not. And then, so what is this? Nar is what? And it doesn't have tamar buta. No, it doesn't have tamar buta. But in Arab, the Arabic language, they consider it as feminine word. So you have to say, hadihi. You cannot say hada naru. So any this thing, guys, I'm not too worried about. Even if you didn't know, you don't care, you don't want to learn this this exception right now. You want to say hada, you can write hada, I'll just correct you. But whatever. Okay. Even this one, I, I honestly I didn't even know this one. The part it just caught my eyes. Because I'm pretty sure they're not making mistake. In that case, you know, this it'd be one of the if I didn't know and you were asking me to say this is a qidr, I would have said hada qidrun. See, that, this kind of mistake is not a big deal. You know, you should know it at this point, and I should have known this. But anyway, just pointing out, uh, looks like the qidr is one of the exceptions that is considered as feminine word. Okay? Say it. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. As long as right now, just uh, make sure you understand the meaning. al milaqatu Okay? And fi. Ha. Hey, did we see fi? Yes, yes. Fi we saw in the last one. Fi is what? Huh? What is fi? Translate, guys. Five minutes. We have five minutes. Fi is what? P is in, and it is what preposition? Yes. What then? If you understand preposition, please tell me uh, the pronunciation of this word. Good, three. Yes. Thank you. That's all. That's all I wanted to know. If you guys know, there's only three. There's only four major rules we learned so far, right? One is alif lam, the rule of alif lam. Inshallah, next week I'm gonna go uh, through. Okay go through all of them uh, maybe i should just complete this one in five minutes uh, then i'll explain what are the main rules we learn not much and if you can master these things alhamdulillah you are in very very good shape Hadihi baqara of course baqara is you know we know what baqara is the second surah of the quran baqara is cow now i should have seen baqaratun there's no baqaratun here it's baqaratu so maybe it's idafa fallah so it should be fallahi what is fallah fallah is farmer farmer Okay, so this is the cow of the farmer. Okay, Bakara is cow. Hada anfun. Ah, hada anfun. Finally, we see our hada anf is nose. Okay, wa hada fam. Fam is mouth. Okay, we have only one mouth and one nose. That's why we're using hada. Let's see what happens here. Ah, that's what I suspected. Hadihi udunun. What's going on? All of a sudden, hadihi, udun is ear. Why? Because we have 
udun in pair to wa hadhihi ainun is ain and why are we saying hadhihi because uh, body parts in pair okay it is female object i mean a female word okay make sense see the rules that we learn it's showing up here and same thing goes for yad yad is hand and why sing hadihi alhamdulillah we have two hands rijl is leg why do we have two because uh, why we're saying hadihi because uh, it we have uh, body parts in pair same rule good any question if not then please uh do this one it says iqra waktu but my, usually i what i want you guys to do is like you know whether you're writing it here or in book put all the harakats like a masji you have to know is it do do ding dan what you have to know it right put all the harakat and then translate main thing is like i want you to put the harakat and translate they say iqra waktu uh, i'm not interested just put the harakat and then translate okay so this one and make sure you know all of these words and uh, and the only thing is that um uh, i think you know all of this except for this one thalaja thalaja is a refrigerator like fridge fridge right thalaja i think every other uh, word uh, they're not talking about beer they're talking about uh, mouth <laughs> i think every other word you should know every other word you should know inshallah okay anyway if you don't know is it is uh, uh, this one word is not a problem but basically they're asking which one you say hada and which one you say hadhi so basically you get, we're going to we can read it yourself like hada qalamun hadhi milaqatun hada kitabun hada qamisun hada baytun hadhi sa'atun hadhi sayyaratun hada babun hadhi rijlun hadhi darajatun hadhi yadun hada anfun you know like this you know just practice you know you don't you can you can take very slowly i'm just reading fast you can take your time and think about is it a masculine word or feminine word it's going to help you okay so you know uh, and uh, yeah maybe it's almost done okay yeah those this is fine if you can do some of from here i think it's really important guys one minute i'm just going to explain to you it's very simple and you should really do this over this weekend it's, this is going to help you everything so you saying hamidun hamidun tabibun hamid is a you know male person name tabib is a doctor now you're saying fatima too remember don't say fatima too now you want to say fatima is a doctor what are you going to do are you going to say fatima tabibatun uh, tabibun no you can say tabibatun tabi uh, ba what is saying tabibatun please it's very simple just the exercise that we did just at tamar buta for all of these words that's it simple no excuse you should be able to do this one huwa muslimun ya muslimatun al babu mughlaqun an nafiza nafiza is window nafiza is mughlaqatun and if you don't know the words uh, use your uh, the dictionary that i gave you okay inshallah we you have any question inshallah you guys can do can you guys do this one is very simple and very nice exercise this is the whole thing about how tra uh, tra you know transform a masculine word to a feminine word okay so do this one and you know make sure you know all of these words and this one okay inshallah yes guys guys guys, guys. too much too much finish inshallah so a try is the magic word that's the only thing try